Wainwright, 70 games. Adams, 40 games. Garcia, 55 games. Holiday, 28. The Cardinals have missed 395 games due to injuries, but still own the best record in baseball. Five and a half games up in the Central. Cards, Pirates, next. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And tonight from PNC Park in Pittsburgh on the banks of the Allegheny, the St. Louis Cardinals, the Pittsburgh Pirates, game two of their four games set. With Rick Horton and Pat Ferris, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Should be another great matchup tonight. Yeah, you've got two teams in the same division, but I think the big picture here is you're talking about the two best teams in the National League right now. The Pirates and the Cardinals both pitch very well, and we've got two of their best tonight. All right, it's Garrett Cole. It is Lance Lynn, two of the better right-handers in the National League. Cole is an all-star this year. The grilling outside the stadium. It should be electric inside. Baseball coming up. Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices on our all-new 2015 vehicles today. Unseasonably cool here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is a packed house full of black and yellow as the Pirate faithful have come out in anticipation of what is one of the, the bigger series of the year. Yeah, I love the big crowds here at PNC Park. This really is a beautiful ballpark. We have great sight lines here, but they have put a nice product on the field the last five or six years. Clint Hurdle has a lot to do with that, and this team will not be easy to beat the rest of this series, but the Cardinals got off on the right foot yesterday. And by doing so, they are now 56 and 30, best record in the game. Matt Carpenter back in a familiar spot. 
positioned in the leadoff spot of this batting order, followed by Colton Wong, and then Johnny Peralta, Jason Hayward, Yadier Molina, Randall Gritchick, Dan Johnson will be at first base, Tommy Pham in center, and the pitcher Lance Lynn batting ninth. An all-star this year, one of the best in the National League in all of baseball. His record stands at 12 and 3. Hard throwing Garrett Cole. Yeah, big half for Garrett Cole. Uh, he only won 11 games a year ago. He already has 12, just three losses. And like Carlos Martinez last night, when Martinez pitches, the Cardinals win. When Garrett Cole pitches, the Pirates win. He has been very, very stingy with runs, especially the last three games. So he's not going to be easy to get to. There's his Hyundai pitch arsenal, four seam fastball, curveball, slider change up he's going to get most of the swings and misses on the slider in that plus fastball the Pirates come in with a record of 50 and 35 Clint Hurdle has turned things around here in Pittsburgh they have found that they can win and win with consistency and they have done that 13th year as a manager he's been with the Rockies went to the World Series with them in 2007 they were swept by the Boston Red Sox, did a little television work, and now at the helm of the Pirates. Very solid baseball man, a good teacher, and Mr. Positive. Mike Matheny, if you define him as a manager, I'd say he's a guy that likes to limit distractions and keep focus with his players. That's kind of his battle cry. We'll see which works here in game two of this series. First pitch is a strike. It's 7.06 here in Pittsburgh to Matt Carpenter. Cardinal third baseman is hitting 270 with eight home runs, and he's driven in 41. And the Cardinals trying to get him going and also looking for the right combination, according to Mike Matheny, with his lineup. Yeah, he said before the game today, he said, I, you might as well try it. He says, I don't know if it'll work, and, and that's a pretty frank answer from a manager, but occasionally you just have to kind of mix the lineup a bit, see if you can get somebody back on track again. Carpenter's been a little sluggish, I would say, at the plate and maybe a little uncomfortable even with the strike zone the last two weeks. Garrett Cole, just the fifth Pittsburgh pitcher to win 12 prior to the All-Star break. Slowly hit up the first base line and it's tapped foul. The first since 1974. Ken Brett was 12 and 6 that year before the All-Star break. If you go back to early September of last year, 16 and 3 his record. Mm. Cardinals have not faced him this year. And the 1 2. We've got two big, strong starting pitchers in this game. Garrett Cole, just 24 years of age. He's 6'4, 222. Lance Lynn, 6'5, 240. So you've got some. We got some horses going tonight. The 2-2. Two -two. Three and two. Pirates have played the Cardinals very well at this ballpark over the last 25 games. They've won 17 of those. And much of that is due to their starting pitching and pitching overall. 2.78 ERA. The last 25 against St. Louis here at PNC. Carpenter pulls it to first base. Taken by Alvarez for the first out. The Bucks defense with Ishikawa in left field. Andrew McCutcheon, the former MVP in center. Gregory Polanco, at times it's been an adventure for him in right. Then Gung at third base. Jordy Mercer, key error in the game last night. He's at short. Walker at second. Alvarez, we just saw him at first base. Chris Stewart behind the plate. Cole on the mound. And that's presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Congratulations to the Tsunami as Carlos Martinez is headed to the All-Star game. Standing next to Michael Waka, he's also going to the All-Star game, but Carlos wins the fan vote and a terrific showing, a lot of attention on social media. Everybody got the word out to vote Tsunami, and he is going to the All-Star game. But, you know, it's not just a kind of a vote for a guy because it feels like a good thing to do. This guy has earned it with that record of 10-3. and three. A check swing by Wong. One ball, one strike. Johnny Peralta is on deck. Peralta is man that third spot in the lineup. And that's because of the absence of Matt Holiday. We will not see Holiday before the All Star break. Disappointing news there. Mm -hmm. 
One ball and two strikes. There's a look at Holiday. They were hoping to get him in potentially as a pinch hitter in either tomorrow's game or Sunday night's game. Then he would be available for the All-Star game. That's not the case. First strikeout of the night for Garrett Cole. Cardinals and Royals teamed up with Mike Moustakis and Carlos Martinez, and apparently it worked. Both are headed to the Midsummer Classic. And again, not charity in either way. They both deserve it. The stock is over 300. Such a good fielder. Royals, maybe the class team in the American League right now. And Carlos was terrific last night, wasn't he? Better after the delay, I yeah, think. Yeah, I agree. You just wonder if he came out guns ablazing, so to speak, because of everything that was on the line. Trying to become a 10 game winner, a chance to get some more votes potentially. He was amped up, and you could see that early on. Then he settled in, and he was throwing 100 miles an hour, and his literally 100 miles an hour in his final inning. One ball, one strike on Johnny Peralta. Some guys like to work on the third base side. First base side of the rubber looks like Cole is right down the middle. The 2 1 is driven out to deep right field. Polanco is back. He'll look up and it's off the screen of the wall. Good strong arm from right field, but not in time as Johnny Peralta is in after a hit this night in game one with a two out double. Peralta showing very good power the other way, and he does it with such a free and easy swing. Never really get the sense that Johnny Peralta is over swinging. Now, he may chase sometimes, but there's just a nice, you know, drop the bat head on it. And that ball flies halfway up the wall, the out of town scoreboard here at PNC Park. I do love this park, Danny. I think it's got some nice sight lines to it, both in the stadium and outside. Perfect setting for baseball. Now Hayward with two outs. And Hayward on the first pitch, a fly ball into shallow left. Travis Ishikawa is there. Cardinal Strand a runner. Lance Lynn to work when we come back in game two of this four game set. Gregory Polanco will lead it off the right fielder followed by Neil Walker a switch hitter then Andrew McCutcheon Lynn has had his way with McCutcheon so far then Gung Mercer Alvarez Ishikawa Stewart and Cole the starting nine in the lineup for the Pirates and Lance Lynn it's his 16th start of the year six and four record but he's pitched better than that and odd to say that Lance Lynn hasn't gotten a lot of run support because early in his career he got run support plus but the ERA still good, 2.53. A lot of swings and misses from Lance Lynn. And we talk about his ability, Dan, to use the fastball up and down in the zone. And he did that against the Pirates 
on the 1st of May where he had 10 strikeouts in a no decision that came in St. Louis. Gregory Polanco hitting 233 with three home runs and he's driven in 21. Matt Carpenter is off the line at third base and in on the grass. Calling the balls and strikes tonight, Brian O'Nora. Vic Carapaz is at first, Brian Knight at second, Larry Vanover, the crew chief, is down at third. Two balls and no strikes. You know, it's interesting, Dan, in your open, you talked about the number of games missed by key Cardinal players this season to the disabled list. Players like Matt Adams, Adam Wainwright, Jaime Garcia, Matt Holliday, and others, but the Cardinals and the Pirates are actually two of the healthier teams in all of baseball, oddly. And I think that may have it came as a surprise to me and maybe to Cardinal fans that when you look at the rest of baseball, there are more games missed by about 27 other teams in baseball. Only in the National League, in fact, only the Milwaukee Brewers have less games missed than the Pittsburgh Pirates, and then the Cardinals are third. It's amazing to me. That, that is amazing. I, I was surprised by that, too. But then you think about the quality of the player that's out. That's the strikeout of Polanco to start the night for Lynn. You miss a Wainwright, huge. Adams is huge. Jordan yes. Walden, Garcia, yep. Holiday. Big names. Absolutely. Cardinals defense with Gritchick in left, Pham in center. Hayward is in right. Carpenter at third base, Peralta at short, Wong and Johnson on the right side of the infield, Molina's behind the plate, Lynn on the mound, and that's presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. One out, nobody on. You watch Lance Land pitch, nothing fancy about it. A lot of fastballs, he cuts the ball, and he's able to spot that fastball. Really developed a very kind of repeatable delivery. We talk about that a lot where he's, you know, he's on on plane if you're thinking golfing terms but he is to the plate all the time and kind of early in his career you'd see him kind of go in and out of that a little bit maybe he'd have some command problems but he's past that guy that really understands who he is and understands how to use the fastball very well two balls and one strike Pittsburgh native Neil Walker tremendous athlete the high school area here grew up about 30 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. And the 2 1. Just missed 3 and 1. The football and basketball star, obviously, great baseball player. They've tried him at catcher at third base, and he's found a home at second base. Line towards short and off the glove of Peralta on the short hop, and Walker is aboard. A base hit for Neil Walker. Tough chance there for Peralta. Very tough chance. He was trying to figure out whether they're trying to catch that ball in the air or kind of on the short hop and just really a tough one to handle for Johnny. Let's take a look at Rick Horton's Toyota keys to the game. Well, we talked about it already a bit, but the lineup mojo, you're hoping by putting Carpenter in that first spot, maybe you get some uh, offensive spark going and defend well. Very important in this game. We saw yesterday the Mercer error, what that led to. Face it into center field. Walker stops at second. McCutcheon now has extended his hitting streak to 17 games, a career high. And the long home run late last night off of Seth Manus. And now a single into center. 17 straight for Andrew McCutcheon. One of the stories last night for the Cardinals certainly was the pitching of Martinez. But it was the defense early on. And key double plays turned by St. Louis. One ended up being a... 5-4-2 double play that Cardinals were able to get Polanco at the plate and the other they were able to double off Gung at third base when he strayed on the line drive back to Martinez and key plays in the game and we talk about defense and I again my second key to this game when you defend well you typically win 
Defense and pitching go together. And Lynn hoping for a little defense right here. Gung is seven for 19 with two home runs against the Cardinals. His first year with the Pirates. Found it interesting. Matt Carpenter said after the game last night, no disrespect to any other pitcher we have, whether in the bullpen or in our rotation, but I'm not sure anybody else makes that play except Carlos Martinez leading Reynolds to the bag on that double play at third. Tremendous play. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Well, you have to be athletic and you have to be courageous to make the play he made. You can't be just one or the other. They both have to be there. One ball, two strikes. Jung Ho Gung. Gung is hit well against the NL Central. 321. But what's surprising about the Pirates, they played very poorly inside the division. They are seven games below 500 in the Central. That's hard to believe. Well, that's a 11 game difference between the Cardinals and the Pirates within the division. And the Cardinals lead the Pirates by five and a half. So do the math. The one two. Tapped foul. Three sixteen. The numbers for Gung with runners in scoring position. Really giving him the left center field gap. Fam and center is shading him in the right center and off the line and right is Hayward. So they're taking the right center field gap away from him. One two pitch strikeout for Lynn number two. The BJC healthcare difference maker the key there is looking at what's remaining in my mind against teams that are 500 or better the series breakdown the Cardinals with 11 and this is as of today in the standings of those teams that are below or above 500 and the Pirates have 15 remaining with teams that are 500 or better but how they've done so far is the top part of that the Cardinals 9 4 and 3 in series against really good teams and the Pirates are under 500 so that's been a difference between this Pirate team and the Cardinal team is the Cardinals are winning series against the best both teams holding serve against teams they should be as far as winning the series but the Cardinals are beating the better teams and that's again the mark of the top level ball club is that you can rise to the occasion Jordy Mercer batting in this spot in the lineup because he's a good hitter against Lance Lynn coming into play. Five for 13, pair of doubles. Just the second time this year he's batted fifth in the lineup. Right center field. He does it again against Lance Lynn. Mercer on his way to second base with a double. It's 1 0. Two Pirates that hit Lance Lynn well. Starling Marte, who's not available today because he's hurt. Josh Harrison, who's on the disabled list. But the third guy you worry about is this guy, Jordy Mercer, who jumps on that pitch and lines it into right center. And it brings in Pedro Alvarez. 14 home runs, 44 ribbies against the Cardinals since the beginning of 2012. Highest totals by any player in the majors against St. Louis. And a strike. He was hitless last night, 0 for 4. Interesting discussion with a lot of people, Dan, that I've had in the last couple of weeks. Just asking them, I haven't had a chance to ask you about what number is statistically relevant when you're talking about at bats from a pitcher, a particular pitcher to a particular hitter. It's a great question. I mean, is it is it 10? Is it 20? Is it 30? And some of it has to be recent numbers, too. You can see Clint Hurdle yelling at the home plate umpire. That's Brian Onora after Alvarez was upset with that first pitch, questioning the strike zone. I think it depends on recent history. So what's happened, let's say, in the last calendar year, 
certainly what's happened this season if the two teams have met. And then after that, I look for 25 to 30 at bats over the long haul of years built up. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good number that everybody's kind of come to is 25 or 30. If you're two for two against the guy, it might not mean anything. Alvarez has big numbers against the Cardinals. And the Pirate fans don't like that call either. And that makes you kind of think about, well, how do we pitch to Alvarez with first base open here with those good numbers he has against the Cardinals? Great point. I can tell you if it's Jake Westbrook on the mound, oh. I'd walk it. Yes, sir. I don't care how distant past the numbers were. Those two, just, them. Those, they, those two were just a line drive waiting <laughs> to happen. Jake had some great games with the Cardinals, obviously, but this was one guy he struggled with. Two on, two outs, two and two, the count on Alvarez. 12 home runs this year. He's driven in 39. The 2-2. Two -two. Strikes out the side, but gives up a run. A two-out RBI double. Jordy Mercer to bring in Walker. 1-0 after one. Johnson coming up for the Cardinals one to nothing Pittsburgh as we move to the top of the second six is a serious number and on the run when the Cardinals score six any size drink just 50 cents the next day coffee fountain or frozen drinks when they score you pour at your nearest on the run you earned it by the way Dan one of our uh, favorites here at the ballpark certainly our favorite Washington National employee and that would be Rick Ankeel was here today and Interesting, he was visiting with Steve Blass to get some background information for the book that he's writing that you've talked about quite a bit that's due out sometime next summer. But he wanted some more research about what Steve Blass went through as a pitcher for the Pirates years ago, which was similar to what Rick Ankiel dealt with. Molina hitting 292. I talked to Steve before the game about this. He said it was a very emotional meeting between the two. I bet said he had told Rick things that he had never told people in 30 years. Wow. And Steve had told me that, and there's a look at Steve Blass, who's working on radio with the Pirates tonight, but he said when Dave Duncan would come through town, he always would tell Duncan as Molina pops it up into shallow left, please send Rick and Keel my regards. And if he ever wants to talk, I'm available. Rick never took him up on that until now. And Rick said today that he said it's while you're playing it's just so hard to even admit what you're going through that you don't want to talk about it too often and now that some time has passed he just feels like it's an interesting storyline for a book and I agree of course the story will be about more things in Rick's life but 
kind of a phenomenon we've seen in baseball over the years. The pressure of this game and the the high performance expectations, and we've seen it. Steve Sachs, Knobloch, so many others. Mackey Sasser. Strike one on Randall Gritchick. His average at 260, seven home runs, and he's driven in 24. No balls, two strikes with one out and nobody on. The Pirates starters, we mentioned this last night, they have won 38 games. That's second to St. Louis. Win by Martinez last night. The Cardinals staff has racked up 40 wins already. Just a bit high. One and two the count. And a fly ball lifted into right center. Andrew McCutcheon. Two down. Eric Cole, top pick for Pittsburgh a few years back. And think about the rotation he was a part of at UCLA. Trevor Bauer, Garrett Cole back to back against college hitters. And it wasn't too long after their days at UCLA were over, they were in the major leagues. Two hard throwers, and Cole has turned into a very good one. A strike at 96. Dan Johnson with a pair of RBIs, and that happened in the Chicago series in his first ever start for the Cardinals. St. Louis still waiting for the return of Holiday, and that changes this lineup. And a 1 1. Interesting with the evolution of the shift. When the shift was first employed in this game, and it's been it's been there for a long time, Dan. And Ted Williams, they shifted against him during the World Series in the 40s, so this is not new. But you would typically only shift against the other team's best hitter to keep him from maybe trying to hit a home run, or you're trying to kind of entice him to hit the ball the other way and see if he would give himself up that way. But now you'll do it against a guy that has been a 30 35 year old triple-a journeyman guy would it bother you as a pitcher the shift take some getting used to I think it would take some getting used to and I think it would bother me it would bother me in this situation if Dan Johnson got a hit to the left side pops it up to the left side Mercer is there and rather gun is there the third baseman and puts it away one two three inning four straight for Garrett Cole
Sports. Dan, Cardinal Nation did an outstanding job over the last few days as far as the fan vote, the final vote for the All-Star game. And for the National League, the representative, of course, will be the man over my left shoulder, Carlos Martinez. The Vote Tsunami campaign really heated up today on Twitter with the hashtag Vote Tsunami. He and Mike Moustakis of the Royals kind of teaming up the Cardinals and Royals to get both those players in to Tuesday's All-Star game. And Carlos told me that uh, probably a dream come true and certainly a very exciting. And then he was asked about the fact that, you know, coming up Tuesday, that would be his normal day to pitch. And he immediately said, I'll pitch. So if they'll ask him to pitch on Tuesday, he will pitch. And he said that in English, by the way. It wasn't through his translator, Tehran. Ishikawa pops out to third, brings in uh, Chris Stewart. Pat, while we have you here, how about the latest with Matt Holiday and what he's going through right now and why not uh, playing this weekend? Well, and that's the frust frustrating part of it is Mike Matheny saw him make a little step forward with his progress yesterday. But then today, not that there was any issues. It's just that he didn't make the progress they were hoping, I think, proving that he could run out of the box hard run uh, to first base, uh, run, you know, and be on the base paths. And I think they wanted to just make sure that he was ready. And that means waiting until after the All-Star break, which the disappointing part for Cardinal fans as well, the fact that he will not be eligible then because he won't be activated before Sunday. He will not be eligible to play in the All-Star game Tuesday in Cincinnati. All right. Thank you, Pat. Two balls, one strike on Stewart. Mike Matheny hitting just to above 300. Yeah, excuse me, Dan. Mike Matheny actually talking about uh, conversations that he had with Matt Holliday when they were thinking about using him as a pinch hitter. Conversations like you hit the ball in the gap and you think you can get two, don't. Or if you are got an easy out, be careful out of the box. And they were actually having conversations about how to be sure not to re-injure. And I think even having those conversations made him a little more uneasy about maybe risking Matt Holliday even in that role and why not give him some more day the 2 2 taken high Lynn struck out the side in the bottom of the first he's got the first man here Ishikawa and now it's three and two on Chris Stewart the Pirates are 16 and four uh, four in his 20 starts this year popped up again on the infield Dan Johnson two down It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag MWDataStrongFan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. I love Pat Paris reporting that Carlos Martinez, when asked about his ability to pitch in the All-Star game, said, I'll pitch in English. And to me, that's an indication that he wants to make sure that he's understood. I mean, you say it in English when you want to make sure you're getting that point across, Dan. There's no doubt about it. That man wants to pitch in Cincinnati. Wouldn't that be fun? Here's an 01. Eric Cole at the plate. Just think about you know what this season means to Carlos Martinez. The loss of Oscar Tavares wearing that number 18 to honor his friend. And now he's headed to the All-Star game after a slow start to begin the year. It's another 0 2 pitch. These two pitchers, Cole and Lynn, last month or so, have been two of the better pitchers in the league as Cole swings and misses. Martinez likes that. Strikeout number four. For Lance Lynn.
Down and master the free award-winning game millions are playing. Download MLB.com, Home Run Derby, free on the App Store and Google Play. Cardinals have 8-9-1 and one in the lineup against Garrett Cole. That means it's Pham, Lynn, and Carpenter with a score of 1-0 in favor of Pittsburgh. Talking with the, the Pirates broadcasters, they said they would drive in from a road trip. It'd be early in the morning, still dark out. You'd see the blue lighting that they have here when the lights that they have on for games are out. And you'd have this, you know, just beautiful setting, beautiful stadium next to the Allegheny. And unfortunately, they did not have the team to match the stadium for a right. number of years. But now things have changed, and this has become a baseball town again. Yeah, they're building it, and they're building it well. They, they built it kind of one piece at a time, and the fans have certainly responded to it. And there were years, Dan, where we would come in to town and, you couldn't get a, a, a fan on the street to talk anything other than Pittsburgh Steelers. Or even the Penguins. Or the Penguins. Even with their, their TV schedule at the end of the season, many of the games were not shown in September because it's a football town at that point in time. 0-1 pitch to Tommy Pham. One ball, one strike. You try to get a cab driver engaged in a conversation about Roberto Clemente or Willie Stargell, and they'd say, well, I don't know about those guys, but let me tell you about the, the uh, 15th round draft choice for the Steelers. Right. I mean, crazy. Ben Roethlisberger and everything that he brings to this city, that's a base hit for Pham. Dug out of the corner by Polanco, and Pham will stop at second base. Well, it's a nice moment for Tommy Pham, and then we may be dealing with a game here, Dan, where runs are scarce. I mean, you would expect that to be the case with Cole and Lynn. So the Pirates get that run in the first inning, but a leadoff double. Polanco runs it down in the corner. This could be, this could be a nice moment for Tommy Pham and the Cardinals. Get that runner over there. Have Lance Lynn move him to third. Carpenter drive him in. Lynn will be asked to sacrifice here, and he bunts it back foul for strike one. Lynn is tied with Carlos Martinez. Both have four sacrifices this season. Think about what's being asked of Lance Lynn, and we use the phrase a lot when it comes to bunting that the idea is to deaden the ball. Trying to deaden the ball. You don't want to hit it hard, but he's throwing it 96. Easier said than done to deaden the baseball. You just put the bat out, and it's going to. It's going to jump off that bat unless you have a little bit of a give to it. Who was a really good teacher bunting for you? The best teacher of bunting that I ever saw in my years of being around baseball, not the best bunter, but the best teacher, is Nick Leva, the Pirates' first base coach. Best bunter I ever saw was a player for the Pirates, Brian Little. That one hurts right there, strikeout number two, and he now works for the White Sox. Lynn does not do his job. Cardinals will need a base hit. One out, and it brings in Matt Carpenter, grounded out first time up. Got to get that bunt down. You don't get many cracks at Garrett Cole. No, you don't. But you could tell he wasn't going to make it easy for Lance Lynn either. The Pirates are 30 and 7 this year when they score first, and they've done so here tonight. First pitch to Carpenter. Take it for a ball. Upstairs and outside. Two balls and no strikes. Carpenter this year in the first half has been one of the best in the National League with runners in scoring position. Three ninety. 
And Matt drives it into center field. McCutcheon going back. He'll look up, and it's gone! Home run for Carpenter! And the Cardinals go on top to center field. A two-run shot, and the Cardinals lead it 2-1. to one. Ninth home run for Carpenter. RBIs 42 and 43. Now, is this for power in that leadoff spot? Hanging breaking ball. And you could tell Cole kind of knew it. It was just a little sloppy with the break. Not a, not a terrible pitch, but too much of the plate. Not sharp enough. And Carpenter crushed that baseball. Now Colton Wong and a foul ball. Just the seventh home run allowed by Garrett Cole this year. O2 pitch. Wong. Hard hit to second base and Walker. Second out in the inning. Matt Carpenter with his ninth home run here the first half. We've seen it a number of times from Matt Carpenter when we're not quite sure whether he got enough of it to leave the ballpark. I mean, he really, when he drives a baseball, it has good carry to it. Something in his swing, something is in his finish that kind of creates that. But I would say he has surprising power. Would it surprise you? That's his second home run off of Garrett Cole. Again, he doesn't give up many, and that's a big one for the Cardinals here in game two. Quite, uh, quite's down the crowd a little bit. Sure does. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Peralta. Two and two. Some hard hit balls in this uh, top of the third against Cole. Inning started with a double by Pham. Lynn struck out. Home run by Carpenter. A one hopper off the bat of Colton Wong. And now a 2 2 pitch to Peralta. And a fly ball lifted to left. Late break. And it drops in in front of Ishikawa. That ball should have been caught. Saturday the Tigers are in Minnesota to take on the Twins and that's a game you can only see on Fox Sports 1 beginning at 3 then at 6 Central Baseball Night in America the Cardinals battle the Pirates on your local Fox station it's all this week on your home for baseball every Saturday Fox and Fox Sports 1 so Peralta is 2 for 2 it brings in Hayward and again they're missing Starling Marte that's a big loss defensively for this club very good defensive outfielder in fact, when Marte's playing left, what the Pirates like to say, and I think they say it with the truth in mind, and it's, you know, they're not bragging about it, but they've got three center fielders in the outfield. Polanco could play center. Marte could play center. And those guys can just cover some ground, and that was not a good play by Ishikawa. Jason Hayward flied to left first time up. Primarily, we've seen Ishikawa at first base. There's a look at Starling Marte. He was running the bases during batting practice today. Took a little BP. Two balls and one strike. And with this, too, the pitch count gets up for Garrett Cole. It's been a long inning for him. He's already had 48 pitches tonight. Add one more to the Pirate injury list. You were going over there. Corey Hart. Who we saw early in the season really kind of an extra bench guy for them with some pop he's been hurt quite a bit two balls two strikes he really needed that home run didn't he you know he had the big hit last night he had a key walk the night before with 
the home run of Johnny Peralta in Chicago. But for the most part, it's been a struggle the last month or so for Matt Carpenter. You just hope this is a little traction for him going into the All-Star break. A short lead at first by Peralta. And a check on him. But not just a traction for Matt Carpenter, but maybe bigger picture than that, traction for the Cardinals offense, which has been good in spurts, but too many times is not put up the big numbers. Actually fourth in the National League in batting, the Cardinals are, which may surprise some folks. The 2-2. Hayward bounces it to second base. Neil Walker puts it away. Cardinals strand their second runner of the night. But a blast off the bat of Matt Carpenter. Back in the leadoff spot with Pham at second. This one to center. One swing, one run lead. St. Louis on top for the first time. And it's two to one St. Louis. The top of the lineup Polanco, Walker, McCutcheon. And now Lance Lynn pitching with the lead. It's a feeling like this is a big inning for Lance Lynn, and a couple of reasons, Dan. It's a point in the game where he started to kind of feel his groove a bit. Struck out two of the last four batters, but he's at the top of the lineup, facing them the second time. And you want to settle into that lead. We talk about that a lot. Once you get some runs, throw up a quick zero and kind of settle into that lead. But if he gets through the top of the lineup here in the third, it may be smooth sailing for Lance Lynn. 1 0 pitch to Polanco. And that first time through the lineup, Lynn struck out four, gave up three base hits, two singles, Walker McCutcheon back to back in the first, and also a double to Jordy Mercer. The 2 0 pitch, 3 0. Mm. Some on Twitter have been asking if that's Dave Wanstead behind home plate, former football coach. Various stops, and that is. He must be in the front row. There he is, right over the umpire's right shoulder. You'll see him this fall on Fox Sports and Fox Sports One, college football analyst. First walk issue by Lance Lynn. Not what he wanted to do after being given the lead. Polanco runs so well, too. 17 stolen bases. You think about that number related to. The Cardinals only having 37 stolen bases as a team. So almost half that amount. 
is the total for Polanco. So he's not afraid to go. Very gifted athlete. He's got those long legs, doesn't he? Yes, he does. We talked about it last night. They feel he's just about ready to put it all together. Ranked is their top prospect for a couple of seasons, and they were waiting for him to arrive. And he's been okay, not great. He's playing center field in the minor leagues, playing right field here in the big leagues. Neil Walker at the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Can't help but to have a little bit of a flashback in my own mind when I watch Polanco body style because honestly it's hard to imagine this and believe it, but Barry Bonds as a young player, oh sure, was exactly like that. Yeah. He Long reminds legs, me. Yeah. yeah. Five tool guy in in growing and learning. Yeah, Barry grew in many ways. And the 2 0 is hit out of play. That he did. He actually was here last year. That's what I understand. Throughout a ceremonial first pitch. You think about it at one point, Bonds, Van Slyke, Bonilla, part of a, a trio of cornerstone type players and then very good players after that to fill in the gaps three and one the count Will they decide to run with Polanco here in his speed and a 3 1 count on Walker? Walker has struck out 65 times. Not running, and the pitch is driven into right field. Polanco will stop at second base. He had to wait a bit on that ball hit to the right side and that may have had something to do with it. Interesting Polanco had a very short lead too. You were asking about whether he was going to go or not and as I watched his lead it was about half the lead and there he kind of jumps over the ball and Hayward charges it hard. You love to see that. You love to see your outfielders want to make a throw daring somebody to run on them but Hayward is fundamentally watching him play in right field quite a few games now I, I like his fundamentals as far as outfield play not just his giftedness but his fundamentals. now you get into the heart of the lineup and here's McCutcheon having said all those things about Jason Hayward if you're the Pirates do you have to take that chance make him throw you out I, I think he's out no I, I wouldn't not down. I, I wouldn't down two to one and Polanco, yes, he runs well, but Hayward was playing a fairly shallow right field, and once Polanco jumped up in the air, he lost about two steps. And then he had to restart. Well, as you said, maybe that's the reason why he didn't. And you got Andrew McCutcheon coming up. Last thing you want to do is run into an out while your best player's coming to the plate. I'm not saying never, and, and maybe it'll work. It would have worked, but I'm, I'm okay with him staying in second. Two balls, no strikes. Quick visit from the Cardinals pitching coach. McCutcheon single to center first time up. Extended his hitting streak with that base hit to 17 consecutive games. Three and zero. Oh, 
You knew he had the green light. I was getting ready for you to ask me. This guy, I think you know. Yep. You didn't even bother this time, did no. you? <laughs> nope. You kind of knew the question. You knew the answer, so you just kind of let it go. I was cringing at the 3-0 pitch, <laughs> too. I think we all were. Now 3-2. A little more defensive swing on that one from McCutcheon. Boy, this would be a big reversal. If Lynn could finish him off. Three two pitch McCutcheon with a fly ball into center field fam gets himself in a position to throw makes the catch and runners at first and third one out and it brings in gun big Lance Lynn will take that trade and out for an extra base anytime. Jung Ho Gun struck out back in the first inning with two runners on. Lin has struck out four. Inning started with a walk, then a single, and a fly out to center. You think Polanco will run on contact and a ground ball hit to the infield? Tonight, after last night, you bet he will. As you know, Rick, I mean, having played this game a long time, I mean, big difference on the road down by a run or two, as opposed to a momentum shifting type play like that. Oh, you bet. Playing catch up at this ballpark, which can be electric. Yeah, and there's two things about it is, you know, he can get. We can kind of pick on and I did a little bit on Polanco making a bad mistake and he did but Mistakes happen in this game and it's a hard game to play you can't do everything right all the time It's it's a game of managing those mistakes But I guess the other part of that is the terrific defensive play that the Cardinals made on the other side 3 and 0 Mercer on deck Who's had his way with Lance Lynn? Now does Gung have the green light on 3-0, the cleanup hitter of the Pirates? I would say no this time. Hit. This game is tied. Gun comes through on a 3 1 pitch. Lynn has been pitching basically behind all night. This game is tied. It's now 2 2. Well, you don't get many leads against Garrett Cole ever, and you hate to give it back that quickly, but because it's 3 and 1, hitters count for Gun. Right on that fastball inner half. Now you just don't want it to become worse. And exactly what I'd said earlier about Lance Lynn being in his delivery, tonight he hasn't been. I mean, almost every time out, he is just straight to the plate, and there's no sloppiness at all in terms of arm angle and the way the ball comes out of his hand, but it's coming out a little more inconsistently here tonight. Overthrowing, pulling it across, leaving it out, getting underneath it. All those are signs of just being a little out of whack mechanically. Jordy Mercer with a double and an RBI to put the Pirates on top back in the first inning. Hits it the other way, slicing foul. 
Dan, I know not all of our viewers are golfers, but many people do, and, it, and it's an analogy that I think really makes sense to those who do golf. It's, you know, you start slicing, so then you kind of turn your hand over and you move your feet and you change your back and you come inside the ball, and then you hook it, and then you say, no, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have done all those things, and you do one less thing, and then you slice it again, and you go back and forth trying to get that groove swing. Pitchers have that same problem. With the double back in the first, Mercer now six for 14 against Lynn. Could be a double play ball, and out hits the runner. That hits the runner. It'll be a base hit for Mercer, but it hits the runner. And that's Walker. And Gung goes back to the bag at second. Now, a runner is not allowed to let the ball hit him or to do it intentionally. And I think that's what Mike Matheny's out there talking about here. And if, if there's a, if somehow it's deemed that that's intentional to keep from there being a, a double play, uh, you know, it's a smart play if you're doing it on purpose and it actually happens. But you can actually say, you can say the guy allowed that ball to hit him will give you a double play. I've seen it before. They can actually call this a double play if they were to believe that Walker allowed that ball to hit him on purpose and actually made it happen. Taylor made ball for a double play. And it's the one time, it's the one time, Dan, that you can assume a double play. Right. Now, does he let this hit him on purpose, or is he really trying to get out of the way? I don't know how you could get in his head and, and believe there's intent there, but I know that's what Mike's at least discussing. Well, at least the umpires are coming together to have a extended discussion about this. So the initial call is it's a base hit with and a dead ball. And that's kind of how it's ruled. So you've got two runners aboard, one out, dead ball. But the umpires all kind of coming together and believing that there's no reason to believe that this was done intentionally. Well, but then you see his reaction with his facial reaction as if to say, I didn't mean to do that. Right. So it's a so, base hit put out to the nearest man, which is shortstop six. So I don't believe he did it intentionally unless he's a really good actor. Now Alvarez. But isn't that something though? Extends the inning. Lynn should be out of it. What would have been a double play, you would assume. Alvarez struck out first time up. Had words with the home plate umpire Brian Onora. Upset with the strike zone. 2-0. It comes a huge play potentially in this game now facing Alvarez who could with one swing in the bat give you a 5-2 lead. It's Walker who is hit on the ground ball the runner at second base. We can solve this mystery. Pretty easily, Pat Paris has talked with Neil Walker many, many times on our post-game show. He's had a lot of good games against the Cardinals. I think Pat ought to go over there and ask him right now. Right, they're buddies. Two-one pitch. Alvarez lines it into left center field. That ball is down. Pham cuts it off with a tremendous sliding play. Quickly back into the infield. They'll hold up the runner at third, and Tommy Pham just saved a run. What a play by the Cardinals center fielders. The Pirates go back on top. So the Cardinals get a bad break on the double play, but they make their own break here with Tommy Pham, who jumps up and fires it in the second. He wasn't sure whether he was going to throw home or to second because the runner Mercer had ideas about trying to score, but he was held up there by Sofield. I don't think he would have made it. 
but clearly a run saving play by Tommy Pham. Ishikawa runners at first and third. Sixty five pitches are ready for Lynn. I could not agree with you more Rick. He's just not in sync right now. Not that he can't find it. Just doesn't have it right now. Two and oh falling behind it seems like with just about every hitter. Four hits and a walk in this inning. The 2 0. Two balls and two strikes. Looking for strikeout number five. Hit out of play. Dan, one of our fans is asking why would that be considered a hit when the ball hits a runner? It was clearly going to be a double play. Why do you get a hit in baseball? Why is it ruled that way? And, and the very simple answer is because. Because MLB says so. Kind of like, you know, with your four year old, you ask the question, and sometimes you just say, because I said so. <laughs> there really isn't a good reason for it. I'm kind of with. With our fan. Doesn't seem fair to the pitcher. 2 2 is hit in the air. Going out, Colton Wong. And he puts it away. Four hits in the inning, a walk, and a lead back to the Pirates. 3 2. Is personalized just for you. Now with the StubHub app, you can select your favorite teams and artists and discover new ones too. Start at StubHub and let the fun to find you. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. This game could wind up being about the bullpens before it's all said and done. Lance Lynn is at 70 pitches. Cole's pitch count at 50. 
And we have not thrown a pitch here in the fourth inning. We started the night thinking about Lynn and Cole and going deep into this game. Hasn't been the smooth sailing that you expected from both guys. Yadier Molina looks at a strike and he popped out to short first time up. I will say that both pitchers have the ability that you know they can kind of right their ship and we'd be in the bottom of the seventh inning and all of a sudden they're both in there and, and nothing's changed from now. Molina hit by the pitch. Or was he? Apparently he was not hit. Well, he was hit, but he doesn't know it, I think. I thought the umpire said that it did hit him, but Yachty hasn't gone to first base yet. He picked up his bat, was ready to hit. Now he's going to first base. And with Molina's reaction to this, that's not going to help. Yeah, you're, you're going to have... The other umpires come in and help decide whether or not he should be at the bag at first. This is reviewable, by the way, and it will be. <laughs> if Molina just runs down to first, he's at the bag, and there's probably an argument with Clint Hurdle, but no review well I don't know I, I think if Clint would have kind of gone from re it did not hit him so the crowd here has just seen the replay which is pretty definitive that the ball hit his bat now this is funny right now the umpires are still reviewing this and Molina has grabbed his bat and is walking back to home plate now if, if Colt throws a pitch to him without the umpires back there that would really be funny <laughs> Yachty was very interesting in post game sound a couple of nights ago after he'd gotten tossed. He was very clear about the young very, umpire, it, it, but he was clear about the, uh, the the good relationship he has with umpires and how much he respects them, despite the fact that they make some mistakes and he disagreed and he said what he said and he said that's baseball. But I think Yachty's very concerned about being professional when it comes to the umpires because they work together a lot. Mm -hmm. Here's a one two pitch. So it was a foul ball and Molina shoots that foul. Now that's funny. The umpires are watching the review. Molina says the heck with it has his bat halfway down the line at first coming back to home plate while they while the umpires are still trying to decide whether he should hit. Two balls and two strikes. It was almost as if he was saying, look, stop it right now. Don't, don't call don't call them, just ask yeah. me. It's obvious. They just showed up up on the uh, the build, uh, big board here. The 2-2. Two -two. Now the we, count runs full. We can just get Neil Walker to admit that he let that ball hit him on purpose. Mm. Then we'd all be happy. I doubt you will get that explanation one way or the other. Yeah, and I don't think he did it anyway, but we were still hoping. 3-2 pitch. Molina hits it left side. Diving stop. And Gunn takes a hit away from Yadier Molina. No good deed goes unpunished. So you don't get the base. Then they take a hit away from you. Tough league. In steps Grichik flying to center first time up. Breaking ball. Knee buckler that time. Well, there have been some glitches about replay over the last couple of years, Dan, but. I think everybody would agree that that really didn't take very long and they got the play right and everybody was able to just move on and that's kind of what you're hoping for from replay and 
ultimately, let's get the play right. Yeah, and, and you're not going to get them all right. And you've got continuation plays that create some complexity to what's reviewable and what's not. Summer judgment calls that you can't review. And I would say baseball is doing a good job of engineering some of the changes, including the speed up rules, which we haven't talked about in a month, which means they're probably working pretty well. When's the, last, when's the last time we talked about the clock? This is Stewart pounces on it, two down. American girl and the Cardinals are teaming up Monday, July 27th for an exciting theme night at the ballpark. Fans who purchase a special American girl theme ticket take home a Cardinals t-shirt for their American girl doll and an iron on transfer for themselves. Get your theme tickets at cardinals.com slash theme. Inside to Johnson. Two outs, nobody on. Popped out to Gung, who's at the shortstop position with the shift on. First time up. Sometimes you'll see teams, the Cardinals do this, put Carpenter on the other side of the diamond with a shift, but Gung is a natural shortstop. That was his position before coming over to the United States. And a high fly ball lifted into deep right field. Polanco back near the wall, and he's got it. Fifteen. That's Thursday on Fox Sports Midwest. We'll replay five of the best games of the first half, including the Cardinals' comeback at Wrigley this past Wednesday. The Cardinals' first half marathon brought to you by your Mid America Chevy dealers. Thursday, starting at one on Fox Sports Midwest. I'd have to go back and look at the schedule and think about some of those games. This past week was a doozy. There's no doubt about that. The way it finished up. The top five, huh? Hmm. Lynn back to work in the home half of the fourth. Well, you had three of the walk off games against the Pirates, three in a row. Deep in the hole, Peralta gets rid of it quickly and not in time. Stewart leadoff base hit. Johnny made a nice play to get to that ball, but he needed a little astroturf along the way. The ball just kind of stuck in the 
grass and didn't have a very good hop for him. Off balance throw, not enough on it. Might have been better off on that one setting and then throwing. Easy to say in retrospect. Still mulling over those top five. I am thinking Greg Garcia's pinch hit home run against the uh, Chicago Cubs. Cole gets the uh, sacrifice down. Stewart advancing from first to second. I'm going to come up with another list for you privately. Our top five moments together on the air, which may have. Oh, nothing wow. to do with the Cardinals winning, but I'm sure no, you'll not, have nothing to do with it. I'm sure. sure you'll enjoy it. Let's see. What do you got? I'm not ready. <laughs> no, I said I'd, I'd have to think about it some. Thinking about the fun we've had in the first half. It's been a great first half for the team on the field, but fun to be talking about this Cardinal run. And occasionally you and I kind of have a little laugh fest. Oh, yeah. Mostly off the air. <laughs> Swing and a miss by Polanco. This is our final game before the All-Star break. We'll be back at it again a week from tonight in St. Louis. We open up with the Mets. Mets hanging in there. Bad news with their young starting pitcher, Mats, who's out. Bouncer towards second base. Colton Wong makes the play. The first two and a half weeks following the All Star break could be key for the Cardinals. They say that because they're home so much. Cardinals have three with the Mets, then an off day, two with the White Sox on the south side, and then back home after just two games. Kansas City on the 23rd. Atlanta for three at home. Cincinnati at three at home. Colorado. That'll be a four game set at home. So you get into August. It's a good stretch for the Cardinals right after the break. Here's Neil Walker. Two for two. So the math on that 13 out of 15 games at home. And the Cardinals have been so good at home 20 games above 500 only 11 losses made that 14 out of 16 because of the Kansas City makeup game so really a chance to put some distance between the Pirates and the Cardinals right after the break. Two outs, no balls, and one strike on Neil Walker. Chris Stewart is the runner at third. Pirates lead in the home half of the fourth, three to two. Keep the first extended break for the players in weeks since spring training. Mike Matheny has told his players that they're going to have the Thursday off which sometimes is a workout day and he believes that his team has been pushing so hard in the first half he's let them know that he's going to give them that extra day now they do play Sunday night prior to the All-Star break which is like losing a half a day of your break in some ways many teams will actually get home on that Sunday night prior to the All-Star break but he just believes that the players need the rest. He said they won't forget how to play baseball in those four days off. Two and one. Well, you get home in the middle of the night on Sunday. And for some players, then they have to get back to their off-season homes. Many of them will do that. Three and one to count. You can see Lynn really frustrated right now. Three and one. The Cutchin is on deck. A 
Drive into right center field. Fam is back, looks up, gone. Dan, we talked earlier about the ball carrying off the bat of Matt Carpenter. You get a little bit of the same with Neil Walker, who has more power from the left side. This one in the second row. And it makes the hill a little bit tougher to climb for the Cardinals here. Cardinals now with a right-hander up and throwing. Lynn at 82 pitches. Lance is due up second, looking ahead to the Cardinals. Top of five. Inside to McCutcheon. One ball, one strike. Seven home runs, RBIs 33 and 34 for Neil Walker. Two and two. Cardinals fell behind, and then Matt Carpenter, two run homer to give him a, a brief 2 1 lead. Four unanswered since then. McCutcheon strikes out. Number five tonight for Lynn. Neil Walker on a 3 1 pitch, extending the lead for the Bucks. On the mound. Xavier Scruggs is in the on deck circle, so that answers the question about whether Lance Lynn is going to go back out for another inning. So rough outing for Lance. I think Benny's right. Just did not have the late movement, did not have the command, and when he made mistakes, 
The Pirates capitalized on it. Certainly Walker did there. That's a big dagger in this game here. Pham has doubled and scored in the homer by Carpenter back in the third. <laughs> Up the middle and Tommy Pham is two for two. So Xavier Scruggs will be the pinch hitter for Lynn. And no easy task, no doubt. Garrett Cole, A.J. Burnett tomorrow. Francisco Liriano. How about A.J. Burnett? Final season in the big leagues. He's made his first all-star team a 1.99 ERA. After a year ago having all the issues with walks. They talk about his two-seamer and his sinker being very good this year. We'll see him tomorrow night. Again, I'm not sure why he doesn't rethink retirement. Maybe, maybe he will. But we talked in game one of the series. The Cardinals had to get to Jeff Locke, and they did it capitalizing, capitalizing on an error last night. And the reason he had to get to Locke is because you've got these three tough starters to follow. 1-0 the count to Xavier Scruggs, so the night for Lynn is through. Two balls, no strikes. Carpenter on deck. Now time is called. Two balls, one strike. The two one. Late with that swing, it's now two and two. Cardinals starting play tonight in the NL Central Division. Five and a half game lead in front of Pittsburgh. John Lackey, A.J. Burnett tomorrow. Tim Cooney, Francisco Liriano on Sunday night. And they turn two for 6 3. Double play. Let's take a look at our choose Nissan.com drive of the game. Matt Carpenter. First home run since May 24th. Been struggling when he's not in the leadoff spot, hitting 234 outside that spot. Back in there tonight, and it's paid off. One for two with a two run homer. You know, it's only five to two, but the way the offense has been going here the last couple of weeks, Cole on the mound feels insurmountable, but you know it's not. It's not, but Cole makes you feel that way. Really, any time he pitches, he's got the low ERA. You know, he's 12 and three, and one of the National League's best. So that certainly doesn't give you a lot of reason for optimism. But you know, I guess the other issue is you talked about pitch counts being up for both pitchers early on. You hope maybe there's somebody in that bullpen that's just going to have a bad day. Two and zero. Oh. Carpenter now with 43 RBIs. That time it gave the Cardinals a 2 1 lead. Three balls, no strikes. There's an example where Scruggs making contact is worse than a strikeout. Yeah. Pitch count wise, and the Pirates able to turn the double play. Three one pitch. And it's a walk. 
First walk issued by Garrett Cole. Two out walk and it brings in Colton Wong. For as good as we talked about to Garrett Cole being this season, I, I've seen him on TV a few times where he is just knifing through a lineup tonight. It's been a grind for him too. It has. And he doesn't have his perfect command either. You mentioned just his first walk, but he's had. He's had some moments. He doesn't have the high strikeouts, Dan, which I think is an indication that he doesn't have his plus stuff. Back to Cole off the end of the bat of Wong. Midway through five, and the Pirates have the lead. It's 5 2. Home half of the fifth inning. Carlos Villanueva takes over for St. Louis. He's finishing up his warm up tosses. Kia in the driver's seat. Highest winning percentage before the break. And the 2015 Cardinals on a pretty good list 44 43 this year. Ricky knows about 1987 and the 1968 team. He's told the story. He thought he'd be the first manager fired. At least that was the talk in 1985. Had a great team. 86 was a down year, and the 87, another great year. 87, terrific offensive team in, in 87. Fun team. And one thing I'd say about this Cardinal team, and in between innings, I went back in our equipment trunk here and I found my positive hat, despite that base hit to left field on pitch number one to Carlos Villanueva. And and now that I have my positive hat back on again, Dan, I tell you that this Cardinal team not only has that high winning percentage, but they've also had some nice finishes. Last few innings of games, it's not been unusual for this Cardinal team to come back, so I think it's still possible. Here's Jordy Mercer, two for two. RBI double back in the first. And a single in the third. Johnny Peralta homered when the game was I would say many of the Chicago Cubs fans were kind of checking that one off already would you think absolutely tough night here for Lance Lynn really fought it from the opening pitch A short outing for him only four innings from Lance Lynn.
interesting with think about Lance Lynn. He's been a little bit overshadowed this year, hasn't he? I mean, the ERA is still really good for Lance Lynn. But with what Martinez and Waka have done in that rotation, and even Jaime Garcia when available and healthy, just so many dominating performances, you just kind of just take take Lance Lynn for granted sometimes. Two and one the count. Maybe the same with John Lackey. John Lackey's been dependable. Lackey and Burnett tomorrow. Two really pleasant, fun guys the days that they pitch. The crusty old veterans. Lackey and Burnett. Two and two the count. Makes me think of Burnett, that one game where he was pitching when he kind of put his finger over his lips as if to tell the Cardinal bench to be quiet. When he was oh, yeah. dominating the Cardinals on a particular day, that didn't set very well. Pick off at first, they got him. Started towards second base, then stopped. And Gung trying to get back to the bag at first, and Molina guns him down. And a strikeout of Jordy Mercer. Love seeing this from Yadier Molina. There's the false start, there's the quick response, and the tag. We had a shot of Johnny Peralta, and you know, you think about that game the other night, obviously, as Alvarez will be the hitter. Would he be your first half MVP of the Cardinals? Boy, there's so many to choose from, but if you had to pick just one, I'd say Johnny Peralta. Say Waka, you could say Martinez, you could say Rosenthal. Rosenthal is where I was going. You can, you can still kind of always say Molina is in the running for that with what he has done with the pitching staff. I don't think we have given enough credit to Rosenthal and what he has done this year. I mean, those numbers are dominating. What he's done this season. Really nice outing last night. He's only missed on one save opportunity. 26 for 27. Position near the bag. Johnny Peralta and Alvarez is the third in final out. Cardinals turn a double play. And Alvarez grounds out. We head to the sixth. 5-2.
5,000 fans can take home a one-of-a-kind beach towel presented by Apple Vacations. Also that day, don't miss out on Prairie Farms ice cream sundaes. Kids can also run the bases. July 26, tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. This is the uh, part of the pierogi race, but it's shark week as well, so I'm assuming that's why a shark is out there in the middle of it all. I would say an awkward... They're clever here. I would say that was an awkward juxtaposition, having a beach towel and a shark Agreed. next to each other. Just saying, right? Kind of like boating tsunami while it was raining. You mentioned that when we were in Chicago. Yeah. We were trying to get everybody to vote Tsunami, which they did, by the way. Congratulations to the Cardinal fan base for making sure Carlos is a National League All-Star. Well-deserving, but needed your support, and I know he's appreciative. Johnny Peralta for the Cardinals. Clayton Kershaw was on that list. Johnny Cueto, who's had a great first half as well, and a Tulowitzki, Familia. favorite, yeah, Familia, the closer of the match, Tulowitzki, the outstanding shortstop of the Rockies. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Up the middle, broken bat, loved by Walker for the first out. First time that Johnny Peralta has been retired tonight, 2-3. A couple of years ago was the Shark Tank here in Pittsburgh. And a member of that crew was Mark Melanson. There's the Shark Tank out there. Jason Grilly now the closer with the Atlanta Braves. Grilly was an all-star that year leading the, the Shark Tank. But Melanson has had a terrific year. So you got to deal with him at the back end of this game potentially. Isn't it interesting, Dan, that we mentioned... Cardinal All-Stars in the first half, and we didn't even mention or think to mention Matt Holliday. There's a base hit into right for Jason Hayward. Holliday, of course, out on the disabled list right now, hopefully coming back after the break, but over 300 in the first half on base all the time. Still a, a solid performer. I think that's indicative of what this Cardinal team is this year. Very well-balanced, good players everywhere. But not the one guy that's having the MVP season, but just multiple players that are having good year. All right, your first half, Cy Young for the Cardinals. Gave you the three choices, Martinez, Waka, Rosenthal. Rosenthal, by the way, just to further the point of the kind of year that he's had. 26 out of 27 saves, 40 in a third innings. He's recorded 45 strikeouts and a .67 ERA when you talk about Trevor Rosenthal. Hayward reads that beautifully on to second base and in scoring position. You may be surprised by my answer, but I'm going to say Carlos Martinez. I like the Cy Young thought being a starter more than a reliever because you're influencing every fifth day, I mean, heavily. And, and you got to start is what you're talking with about. the innings that you're throwing and, and the game is all about what you do and, and Carlos Martinez has been a big winner Let Rosenthal and Waka a close second ERA by the way for Martinez minuscule since right around the first week of May he's had the best run of anybody in baseball and if that continues, who knows? You get into that conversation of the actual Cy Young. He rattles off seven, eight, nine wins. Puts himself in that type of position. Same with Michael Waka. Cole, off the mound, steps and throws. Retires Yadier Molina. Zach Greinke has had a tremendous first half for the Dodgers. He would be in that conversation. Eric Cole, watching here tonight. Eighty-six pitches.
Taken just a bit high by Randall Gritchick. Chase to pitch down in the zone in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes with two outs and a runner at second base. You get one here, you're only down 5 3. This becomes an important at bat. Wanted that pitch up in the zone. Next level of development for Randall Gritchick is to not chase outside the zone. And a strikeout of Gritchick. Pittsburgh Pirates have a lead of five to two over the Cardinals Lynn four innings nine hits five earned but only four innings tonight Carpenter one for two with a two run homer Garrett Cole six innings six hits and Walker is three for three with a homer and two RBIs second inning of work for Carlos Villanueva we were at a point in the game, Dan, where we thought that it was possible for Garrett Cole and Lance Lynn to both settle down and start putting zeros on the board. They're both good enough to do that, and they both got a track record to do it. And unfortunately, Lance Lynn wasn't able to find it, but Garrett Cole did. Three straight zeros. Cardinals running out of chances. Ishikawa is 0 for 2. Chris Stewart. An infield hit has also popped out. He's on deck, and then Garrett Cole spot seven, eight, nine in the lineup. The two one pitch. Being away of it working from the first base side of the rubber. Just barely.
3 2 pitch hit out of play. It's not. And a walk to Ishikawa to start this inning. August 1st, 12,000 fans, 15 and under, entering with a ticket, receive their very own limited edition mini Build a Bear workshop bear, wearing a Saturday alternate jersey. It's also photo day to be able to go on the field before the game and get photos of the players and coaches, even Fred Bird, Cardinals.com slash promotions. Pinch runner is Gorky's Hernandez. Is Chris Stewart? Strike one. One for two on the night. As the first half is kind of coming to a close here, as you mentioned, Danny, this is our last game before the break. There'll be games this weekend, but you think about Carlos Villanueva, big picture, what he's meant to this Cardinal bullpen. He's had his rocky games the last three weeks or so, give, given up a couple of late home runs, but for the most part, he has been a stabilizer in games like this. Terrific job. Given his team a chance to win, he's had put up a lot of important innings, especially early on when the Cardinals were building their bullpen. And you know something that happens in a season: you get, you don't really know what you have till you kind of get going. A few weeks into the season, and roles starting to get defined. You remember coming out of spring training, we didn't know who the eighth inning guy was, or the ninth inning, or the seventh. And there's a strikeout of Stewart. Especially after Jordan Walden got hurt kind of up in the air And I think he was a very important part of kind of stabilizing things Derek Cole is our AT&T universe rewind he has struck out three allowed the home run by Carpenter That was in the third He's allowed six hits tonight just two runs AT&T universe rewind had you seen enough of Lance Lynn tonight? You yeah. thought it was time? Yeah, I thought it was time. I, I just thought there was nothing maybe to gain from him sure. going out there while he was out of whack. If he'd have found it, maybe the inning before when you got to the point where he was pinch hitting, then maybe you send him back out there. But I, I think it was the right move. One out, Villanueva would love a double play here. Cole trying to bunt. Gorky's Hernandez into scoring position. Cole sacrifice back in the fourth. He's also struck out. Near the halfway point or past it, but near the all star break. Yankees with a three game lead over Baltimore. They're in Boston tonight. Kansas City, five and a half game lead over Minnesota. Houston, 10 games above 500, leading the Angels by a game and a half. Washington three in front of New York five in front of Atlanta Cardinals with their five and a half game lead currently and then Los Angeles the Dodgers leading Arizona by five and a half along with San Francisco How about Arizona first year to Tony La Russa Chip Hale 42 and 42 I was surprised they're playing 500 I noticed that today too and really not very many games behind the Dodgers Certainly within striking distance. Tied with the Giants and thought maybe San Diego would be at least five games ahead of Arizona at this point of the season. San Diego a little bit of a disappointment as far as I'm concerned. 
Arizona a surprise. San Diego's got some chips out there too. There's even talk that Kimbrell could be on the move. Interesting. We've got Upton. Matt Kemp is under contract for I believe three more seasons. Even James Shields. It's talk of Shields potentially moving after signing him in the offseason. So two names come to mind when you start thinking about closers right now with teams that aren't doing very well. You think of Kimbrough. You also think of Jonathan Papelbon. And, you know, when a team's not doing well and you say, yeah, but you got a good closer. You feel like saying, so what? <laughs> I mean, it's great to have them, but we don't get to them very we often. We don't get to use them a lot. And that's certainly what's going on in Philadelphia. 2-2 pitch. Bunted. Foul. And so Cole goes down in the books as a strikeout as Molina let that roll and roll and roll. And finally, just enough foul. Boy, just barely. It hits the grass a bit, and it's kind of going foul, and Molina tracking it. And once it's fully foul, then you touch it, move it out of the way. So that is now three strikeouts for being the wave up. Here's Polanco walked and scored back in the third, grounded out to second, and it's been struck out. Gorky's Hernandez back to the bag at first with two down. You want what's on tap? I know you do. I do. Yeah. Everybody at home does too. You want it? There it is. What's on tap? Presented by Budweiser. Lackey and A.J. Burnett tomorrow. Six o'clock on Big Fox. Budweiser, what's on tap? One ball, one strike on Polanco. Short lead at first by Hernandez. You know, it's this kind of game where I think the importance of having a catcher like Yadier Molina gets magnified. It's one thing if you've got a guy that's kind of just pitching perfectly. You know, Lance Lynn clearly wasn't today, but you know you had Martinez yesterday. You just kind of put a number down, and it's and it's fun. But when you've got to help coach and kind of coax your pitcher through a jam and and through a rough day, I think that's when it's great to have a guy like Molina, so the damage isn't worse. Two and two with two outs, runner at first, and now being a Nueva wants a uh, new baseball. About the number of meetings that you had to hear people. I know most people don't like meetings, but if you're talking about the player that's in the most meetings on a baseball team, it's your catcher. Every day, long, long discussions about how to pitch everybody and how to get the job done. Runner goes, Molina's throw is not in time. Hernandez, the stolen base, and a great jump against Villanueva. Well, 
close, but on the bag. Throws right there. Three and two, the count on Polanco. Three two pitch. Pulled foul. Two outs, runner at second, and the 3 2 pitch again. Second walk issued by Carlos Villanueva. Yellowwood bringing the lumber. Neil Walker on a 3 1 pitch against Lance Lynn, who was 3 2 at the time, and this becomes a two run shot and makes it a 5 2 game. That's a big moment in the game so far. And of course, there are a lot of big moments in the game, but that one the biggest. As Walker extended the lead with the National League's biggest winner, Garrett Cole, on the mound. It just makes it tough to mount a comeback against a guy like Cole. Walker's always been good against the Cardinals. Three for three tonight. He scored a couple of runs, driven in two. Just not an easy out. It's it the other way and foul. Didn't get a chance to ask Mike Matheny. Intended to, didn't get it, didn't get the moment to, to ask him about pitching to Walker from the left side instead of the right side last night. It worked out, but he is definitely a better hitter from the left side. The Cardinals at that point in the game had Randy Choate in to face the previous hitter. They brought in Manus and Manus got him out. It was all good. 0 1 pitch. 0 oh, 2. By the way, always a lot better to ask the manager after a win. No, yeah, and after a works. win and after a situation that worked. <laughs> exactly. Is, why did you do that thing that didn't work out? Is not a good way to start a sentence. But you know that great move you yes, made yesterday? Can you explain it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a little better. It's, just, it's received well. It is. Villanueva trying to send us to the seventh inning with the score at five to two. Two runners on for the Pirates. And the 0-2. Strike out of Walker.
on the Steel City. The Cardinals won game one of this series. The Pirates looking to even the series here tonight. Players to watch brought to you by DraftKings. Players to watch are guys throwing the strikeout pitch. And these four guys averaging more than nine strikeouts per nine innings. And on that list, a couple of Pirates and a couple of Cardinals. We saw Martinez last night seeing Cole tonight, and we will see Liriano in this series. Cole has been a handful. This is our Honda home run inning. If a Cardinal player hits a home run, the Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Leading off for St. Louis is Dan Johnson, Cardinal first baseman here tonight. He's 0 for 2. Had a good start at the big league level this year with St. Louis, 35-year-old. Got called up earlier this week and had an immediate impact. Pirates again have the shift on for Johnson. It'll be 7, 8, 9 for St. Louis, trying to figure out a way to get to Garrett Cole, who has not been his dominant self today, but he's been certainly good enough. One walk, three strikeouts for Cole. And six Cardinal hits in six innings. Two and one. Fastball still there, mid-90s for Cole. Pirates have out hit the Cardinals 10 to 6 here tonight. 3-1 pitch. It's taken high, so a leadoff walk. The Cardinals have a base runner. Well, that's a way to get back into a ball game. Cole not happy with himself, shaking his head, and perhaps not happy with Brian Onora, our home plate umpire. Trying to calm him down a bit. Catcher Stewart out to talk to him, and Neil Walker joins the conversation, and now Ray Searge, the pitching coach comes out to settle down Garrett Cole. Our umpires, you saw, Onora, Carapaza, Knight, and Vanover. And Ray just trying to calm down his pitcher and trying to get his focus off of Onora and on to the job at hand, which is Tommy Pham. You know what we're going to do? This half inning, we're switching it up. You're doing play-by-play. Right. Play. Okay. We're going to have some good luck. All right. You got your good luck hat on? I do. I'll be the analyst. It's a, it's a size too small. It's a size too small. Maybe my head's got a little bigger, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what a good color night guy does. <laughs> laugh at laugh at my jokes. I like it. Okay, five to two Pirates. Garrett Cole, conversation <laughs> over. Dan trying to compose himself. Ninety nine pitches for Garrett Cole. Bam, two for two. He doubled and scored in the third inning and singled in the fifth. And the first pitch to Pham is swung on and hit late. Strike one. Got any color for that foul ball, Dan? A little late. Thank you. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Take a nap. <laughs> Big gap in right center for Tommy Pham. And the pitch a bit outside, one and one. 5-2 Pirates. Do I chime in now? Anytime you want. Uh, Jared Hughes is throwing in the pin. Oh, that was awesome. Good information. Thanks, Dan. Breaking pitch is a strike. What have you thought of Derek Garrett Cole so far tonight? Better as the game has gone on, in particular with his breaking ball. I thought his breaking ball has improved after the second inning. And we saw a good one there. The one two pitch is swung on and tapped in front of Cole. He's going to have to hurry to get Pham, and he does just in time by a step. Nice play defensively by Pham and Johnson on the second base. You know, back in my days of playing wiffle ball in the backyard of South St. Louis, you'd have to be quick as a cat to get this kind of play under your belt, make a strong throw, and hopefully hit the runner going up the first baseline. In this case, Pedro Alvarez is at the bag, but in wiffle ball when we played, he'd have to hit him. Now back to you. 
Kind of hard to throw a wiffle ball that hard, though, wouldn't it? Wasn't it? Kind of had holes in it. It would sail. It's a great question. He had to get a good grip, cover up a couple of holes with the index finger, find another hole to cover it up with. Back to you, Rick. Good information. There's strike one to Mark Reynolds. Reynolds, four for 14 as a pinch hitter for Mike Matheny. And we certainly know he's capable of the long ball. And the pitch to Reynolds is at the knees. So quickly, 0 and 2. Still at 96, throwing hard. Back to you, Rick. You don't have to keep saying that. <laughs> you point to me, or you just nudge me, or kick me. Got it. And the pitch is swung on and missed. No, he fouled it off, got a piece of it, and stays alive. So he's got a couple hits against Garrett Cole. Just barely stays alive. Hundred and six pitches now for Cole. Perhaps his last inning. The 0 2. High and tight, one and two. Reynolds has been very versatile for Mike Matheny. He's played some outfield. DH in a couple of American League games has been very good, I think, at first base as well as at third. His original position in the big leagues. The one two. Foul back, good cut there. You know, the only thing they did for the pitcher after 1968. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's funny. <laughs> One and two the count. Hangers fouled off by Reynolds. He had a pitch to hit there and just didn't get it. Telly knows it. Well, if I'm, I'm truly going to act like an analyst that I work with, one that might be doing the play by play right now, I'd have to chime in and say, you know, Mark Reynolds went to the University of Virginia. I went there too. <laughs> And let me tell you how now smart that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were making fun of each other here. <laughs> that one fouled back. Tell us more about UVA, Mr. Analyst. The other analyst I work with at times will tell you an account of one ball and two strikes, you got to bow your neck. Well, let's see if Garrett Cole will bow his neck here. As we all try to figure out what that means. <laughs> Johnson, the runner at second. And he wants to talk to his catcher, Stewart. What do you think this conversation is all about, Dan? Well, you're at 110 pitches. And you're just trying to calm him down. He's an emotional guy out there. This may be his final hitter could be the final pitch of his night right here. So one thing you may want to look at at this pitch middle outer half. Do you have one more breaking ball you can give me to see if we can't get Reynolds to chase. Let's see if he does. There's a breaking ball and it's fouled again by Reynolds. He's hanging tough. Nice crowd on hand here tonight as we've mentioned. Oh yeah. Uh, trust your stuff. Now back to you, Rick. There's the crowd. I'm giving you a lot of help. And the one two is back up the box, and Walker has it and retires Reynolds for the second out. Johnson on the third. The Cardinals just not able to get enough hits together in an inning. They had a couple of base runners in the fifth inning, a single in the sixth, and a runner here in the seventh inning. But Cole has put up zeros. Since the two run home run by Matt Carpenter, that came in the third. And here is Carpenter. We'll bat with two outs. You know, the guy behind home plate, I've had a chance to visit with him on a number of occasions, and he likes to wear old uniforms from back in the 1940s, 1950s. That's the 1970s cap. And uh, like the other analyst I work with, he really appreciates his facial hair. Now back to you, Rick. First pitch 
inside for a ball and you know his name right is it you're an analyst Rick oh that just fits perfectly it's true you guys are perfect together nice man want to know the count to Carpenter bounced out homered and reached via the walk there's a ground ball right side and Walker gobbles it up and he'll throw out Matt Carpenter and it's time to stretch here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. The fans enjoying a 5-2. You know, there's lead. another thing I want to tell you. Save it. Nice job. Terrific, As always. terrific job yourself. Thought I really brought some insight, brought the fan inside the game. I, th I think you did a terrific job. As the Cardinals will bring in a new reliever, Miguel Sokolovich. He's our Chevy call to the bullpen. He's had some nice outings for the Cardinals. Back to you, Dan. Is that what you say? I didn't realize I, I didn't have to say back to you, Rick, every time. <laughs> Oh, it's terrific. Every point made. When I was now in, back to you. When I was in wiffle ball. <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, here's Andrew McCutcheon. Bottom of the seventh rolls in. Miguel Sokolovich. Fastball and a strike. You know, Dan, 162 games. I think it's important for all of us in this game. And it doesn't matter whether you're playing or coaching, managing, general manager, broadcasting, fan, to be reminded that this is a fun thing. This is not, you can get so serious about how your team's doing, how you're doing, that you kind of forget the, the enjoyment factor of baseball and just kind of laughing about it. I, I think relievers maybe understand that better than anybody associated with baseball. Wait a minute, what did you used to do? You were a reliever at a pretty good portion of your career. And I'm just saying, there's, <laughs> they, they're, they're having fun. That, that's what they do. And they get it. They sit out there with each other. They're away from the manager. They're away from the pitching coach, the hitting coach. They've got the bullpen coach who's more of a, I, I think, a psychologist. Yeah. Psychiatrist, whatever. You know, you're out there just talking about the game. You're paying attention, you'd like to think, which they are. But they have fun. The bullpen coach is kind of like the hall monitor. You know, they kind of have a job to kind of keep you going, but they're not, you know, they're not like coaching you up every second of the day. There's some relaxing going on in the bullpen. But as you said, when the, when the when the phone rings, all business. Cardinals have been out hit in this game 10-6. 
and yet they only trail by three runs in this game. You have a chance now to get into that bullpen in a key inning, which is the eighth, because you will see more than likely Melanson in the ninth. Safe situation, you certainly will. See, Clint's in touch with the fun of the moment. Up the middle, slowly hit, tough play. Wong and makes the play. Not only is he charging that, Rick, but you're thinking about maybe the potential of that ground ball hitting the bag. Very close. We saw that with Pedro Alvarez, his last at bat. He almost did that as well. Up the middle, Sokolovic gets the ground ball, but. Wong, I think, smartly gets the ball before it reaches the bag. And makes the play. Nice play by Colton. Dan, my grandmother, who is a Cardinal fan, you've heard me tell this story before about how much she loved Stan Musial growing up in New York. And was thrilled that I had a chance to be drafted by the Cardinals because she loved Stan Musial. She saw him play and read Shane Deans, loved him. All my extended family Cardinal fans because of her influence she passed away during the 85 World Series and but not before I had a chance to send her a photo of Stan usual which she appreciated but one of the things she taught me about life was that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy and that's an old saying and people say that but I think it, it is very true about this game of baseball you have to understand the play of it. there's work involved but there's also play and I think a player can grind so much that they grind themselves right into a ground into the ground at times you need to be able to understand that that baseball is a fun thing. We talk about it a lot the amount of time that's spent at the ballpark. By so many of the coaches and the players the other day Joe Madden after the doubleheader basically told the team for game four just be ready to play. Don't show up. We're not going to have BP. Don't show up early. I don't want you here. He even at times, and he's not the only one, but he's been a manager that will literally lock the clubhouse as Gung hits it to third. And he'll open it up around 5 o'clock for the players to get dressed, maybe get a little bit of treatment to get set for that night's game. But his, his point is it's too long of a season to be spending it in the clubhouse and worried about that night's opponent. That's why one of my most favorite moments of this Last month, I guess I'd say of Cardinal of the Cardinal season is the video that you all had in Chicago of the Cardinal rookies going across <laughs> the street from Wrigley into a Starbucks in uniform and getting coffee for the veterans, which I understand included Pat Paris. Pat Paris asked for a coffee and, and he got one and, too. And Mitch Harris brought him one. No. Yes, he did. You hadn't heard that? No. It's it's a fact. So the guys. I mean, where do you, where else does that happen other than the game of baseball? Wait a minute. I want to go back to this Paris thing. Here is Jordy Mercer. It's true, Dan. Well, thanks See? a lot for asking us if we. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys were, well, you know, Wrigley. You guys were 17 stories up through 74 ramps, and I wasn't going to run up there and ask you. But Mitch was nice enough to offer, and I said, "Well, keeps me from having to stand in this long line that you've now created, because they." They caused quite a ruckus, and a lot of Cardinal fans, even some Cub fans, wanted to line up behind him, get pictures, and stand in line at Starbucks. So he was nice enough to get me one. Fun moment, though. Yeah. Well, Pat, you know they have these things called phones. I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't own one of those. <laughs> I got shut out of the coffee.
Midwest, we go to our studio at a Bomberito Sports Update with Jim Hayes. Nice, Jimmy. That's great. Tony Watson, our Chevy call to the pin. Another solid first half for Watson. One of the top lefties, really, in the uh, the National League. Thinking the same thing. You, you know, you think about some of the tough left-handed relievers. A role Chapman's going to come to mind as, as far as a closer is concerned. But, you know, Watson's on that next tier. There, there's not very many left-handers in this league that are having the kind of careers that Tony Watson is having you know Kevin Segrist is getting better and better and there was some talk about him being a kind of an all-star type season too with the numbers he's putting up but Watson certainly a tough lefty Sean Rodriguez takes over at first bit and the first pitch is taken inside by Colton Wong unbelievable someone just tweeted a photo to me at Danny Mac TV you'd like to get the real story on your Cardinals as Wong pulls it foul. Look at this photo. There's Pat Paris. Did I see him? There's Mitch Harris looking at Pat. Pat is on his phone, by the way. Right. So apparently he does own a phone to see if we need a ah, and, Good uh, evidence. Yeah. And he is not clearly texting or calling me if we needed now coffee. Does, does he have the, the Starbucks from Mitch yet? Mitch has got a, about four of them with him. And uh, is not handed it off just yet. But Mitch is looking at Pat in this photo, uh -huh. and I think Pat's just saying, hey, just take it inside. I'll get it later. Unbelievable. Hmm. Here's a one-two pitch. Slowly hit right side. Gloved to Rodriguez for the out. Tony Watson and the Hyundai pitch arsenal. Good sinker. We'll see a slider rarely, but it's a sinker with a changeup. Always hear sinker slider. This changeup is a plus pitch for him in the fastball mid 90s. We talk about it a lot, but most relievers will have two pitches primarily. Most starters will have three or more pitches generally. And it's one of the ways you determine whether somebody is a starter or reliever. You kind of look at him as is this is this kind of a is he a sinker slider guy? If he's a sinker slider guy, doesn't have a changeup, doesn't have a curveball, he's probably going to be a a reliever. But if you think he's got a kind of a plus changeup and, and really a three pitch pitcher, you might think about making him a starter. Hit to short. Two down. Oh, the pick by Rodriguez on the backhand. Two outs. Well, if you want to reproduce this, good luck to you. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Not sure I would reproduce it, but I might retransmit it. Especially your inning of doing play by play. Of course. Sensational, as Sol always. Solid gold, wasn't it? It was outstanding. Well, the play by play just kind of was riveting. Just had a flow to it, didn't it? Really did. Well, you do a great job. You all have a couple games coming up with the White Sox. Did you ever think when you were playing for the White Sox, I'd be back here doing play by play? No. Not even close. Now that's kind of cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool, and, and it's a different stadium, but but still, so many of those guys that were teammates then are coaches now, right? And and it's it'll be fun to go back to Chicago and the South Side fans certainly love their White Sox. Game that comes to mind for me at that ballpark was Anthony Reyes 
nearly throwing a no-header if not for Jim Tomei with a home run down the right field line. Threw a one-hitter through eight innings, I think, and the Cardinals lost one nothing. believe I was on radio for that game because I kind of remember 13 strikeouts or something like that for Reyes. He was unhittable. Watson, a tough lefty here. Strikes out. Jason Hayward, 5-2. Brought to you by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. One of the good guys that we uh, enjoy seeing at Fantasy Camp every year is Scott Cooper. He's teamed up with former Texas Ranger Matt Whiteside. They run the uh, St. Louis Gamers, which is one of the top youth programs in the Midwest if not the country and we want to pass along that July 28th and 29th you can try out for that team stlgamers.net to look at uh, what age groups you could try out with those guys but uh, they do a tremendous job and a lot of scholarships generated from the uh, gamers program and also many of the kids that they've coached have gone on and been drafted stlgamers.net and that's July 28th and 29th to make sure and pass that along for Scott. They do a great job, and I remember vividly watching Scott Cooper pitch in high school for Pattonville High School at Bush Stadium. They were playing in the one of those games, the high school games at the ballpark, and I had a chance to watch him pitch a little bit. And he was a he was a great player in high school, and he happened to pitch that game too. Mm -hmm. But certainly knew the name coming out of St. Louis area high school. He went on to be. A all star for the Red Sox and came back to play for the Cardinals as well and he, he does do a great job. It has to be hard to go back to your hometown team mm. and play. All the requests on your time. The tickets. Those requests. As Rodriguez hits it out to right field. There's Hayward. Well, I think the pressure you put on yourself is maybe the hardest thing of all those things. Yes there are demands but. To realize you want to be perfect and you want to be great because you realize that you're, you're playing in front of friends and family every single night. You just can't kind of hide from that. A strike. Borkis Hernandez, second inning of work for Sokolovich.
Miguel a very likable guy. His English is, I would say, good, not great. But I think he's very appreciative about getting this opportunity out of the Cardinals' pen. I think he showed well. Has a good changeup. Carpenter just in time. Getting Hernandez, who can really run. All-Star game will be seen on Fox and coverage begins at 6 this Tuesday from Cincinnati. I believe I read. I'm not sure if it's a full commitment, but the expectation is that Albert will be in the home run derby. Oh, yeah. And He's that, in. And that Chris Bryant will be in the. National League side. I'm not sure about this. I think I'm right. Those two will meet up. It's a different format this year with how many home runs you can hit in a certain time frame, and then you're matched up one on one, and then you go to the next round and the run uh, round after that. I'd like to see those two matched up. That would be now. That would be interesting. I'm not normally home run derby is not my favorite part of the home run or the All Star game, but I'm intrigued by this one. It's it's not my favorite either. I went to it though in St. Louis. Yes. I wanted to see it. Wanted to take in my first All Star game experience. Nice play made by a fan. I actually know where you were sitting at that because I saw you there because I was working at the in house feed interviewing some of the players when the All Star game was in St. Louis and talked to Prince Fielder who was dynamite that day. It was just amazing to see him do what he did. But you know an ex pitcher can only watch so many home runs without <laughs> kind of starting to feel a little nauseous flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> My neck hurt. And a fly ball lifted into right there's Hayward and that sends us to the ninth. Good work by Miguel Sokolovic. Ninth inning coming up it's 5-2. We've got uh, Molina coming up. Gritchick, Mark Melanson, the Chevy call to the pen. All star closer, 28 of 29 in save opportunities. I don't know who you voted for for the June pitcher of the month, but he was my vote. His numbers were so good in the month of June. Unscored upon and the, the save percentage you mentioned, very high for Melanson. And, you know, he's, when you look at him, he's not one of those prototypical closers in some ways. He's not kind of. So nasty when you when you watch him throw that you think okay he's unhittable but he just keeps getting the job done. 
I cheated a lot in high school and college. So did I you probably, copy off of me? Yeah, I probably did. So I probably had a vote for Melanson too. <sighs> Sorry. It's a privilege to get to vote for the. It is. Player and we I, vote. I need for to think about who I seriously. I yeah. need to think about who I. I don't did. think it was Melanson. I, I kind of remember you saying, start a different starter, but vote for pitcher of the month, player of the month, and rookie of the month. Mm -hmm. This guy has been really good. Really good. Even better than he was a couple of years ago and last year. They talk about his control this season being better than it has been. He's always had good stuff, but more pinpoint this year. talked about it earlier Dan but the 5 2 lead seemed bigger than your typical three run lead and a ground ball slowly hit to the right side Molina retired Melanson by the way eight walks in 41 and a third if the Pirates could hold on they would be four and a half games back Brings in Randall Gritchick with the Cardinals trailing five to two with one out here in the top of the night. Solid job for Garrett Cole, the Pirates starter. Seven innings, two runs. He's trying to win his 13th game if Melanson can close it out. 21 out of 28 first pitch strikes for Cole. I think that was a difference for him. 114 pitches. Well off the line at first base for Randall Gritchick. And a fly ball hit to right field. And it's foul. Gritchick has been close on a couple of swings here tonight. And I can't really pinpoint it, Dan, just to say it's a field thing that, you know, he's been kind of out of sorts in some of his at bats over the last week but but tonight he's been closer not a lot to show for it 0 for 3 but closer and the 1 1 inside what do you think the biggest storyline will be for the Cardinals looking ahead to the second half health well, I think health, but I also think deal or no deal. There's going to come a time where they're going to have to decide whether or not they've got enough horses or not. I think that's going to be a big story. And, you know, you kind of got us thinking about that, Dan, but I think it'll be on John Moselock's plate to figure out whether or not this is a uh, this is all we need or do we need another batter or, or where does this team go from here because mm -hmm. typically if you're going to make a splash you're going to make a splash by giving somebody else somebody they want that's a base hit in the left well he hits the ball hard doesn't he, he does Marco Gonzalez by the way started pitching again today he's pitching in Florida not really a rehab assignment. He's really just transferred to that team. But he's beginning his journey back, probably 30 to 40 pitches today. Haven't seen his line yet, but just nice to have him back in the line to maybe be in one of those arms that helps in the second half. You know, if you're Johnson, I understand you're a first baseman, corner position, but you have to think about getting on base any way you can and bringing that tying run to the plate. Do you bunt? That's the question. Well, if you're the Pirates, do you allow him the chance to bunt? And I would say no. That's This is one of those cases where I don't like the shift. And if he gets a bunt base hit, the Pirates will kick themselves. Marco Gonzalez today, two innings, one hit. Struck out three. No decision, obviously. 21 pitches. And that was at Palm Beach.
Yeah, the goal right here for the Cardinals, Dan, and you were alluding to it. Get the tying run to the plate somehow, some way. Give yourself a chance. The one two. Johnson hit one to deep right center. Caught on the track. He's really burying that slider down and in to Johnson, isn't he? Really tough to get the arms extended. One, two. And again, he does the same thing. Even the fastball has been in on the hands. Check swing and did not go. Johnson's first hit as a Cardinal was on a pitch that was in where he was jammed, but he was able to get enough of it on it to get it into the outfield. Over the head of the second baseman and I'd like to see that again. I would guess they're going to come in again on him, either the fastball or the slider. Just get enough of that bat head on it to, to drive it for a base hit. The 2 2 pitch. Good at bat. Full count. Still alive. Crowd just now realizing that Stewart wasn't able to hang on to that foul tip. New life for Johnson. thing I would say about these pirate fans Dan and the number of times that we've come here in the last couple of years as the fan base is growing and growing they're not loud all game long but when they're loud mm -hmm. they mean it especially in the playoffs a couple of years oh, ago boy. great atmosphere Time call. You know, last night you saw a time granted late yeah. with Manus on the mound, and then the next pitch, home run. Home run. Next pitch, number 11 of the at bat. You know, the unbalanced defense that the Pirates are playing right now also opens them up to Johnson getting jammed and hitting a little squibber down the third base line by accident with nobody there. Think about pitching him in and a ball that's fought off and just a soft liner the other way.
good at bat here. Mm -hmm. fly ball into right Polanco back in just enough for him mm. that was a great at bat that almost had a payoff to it Neil Walker is our Budweiser player of the game three for four two run homer a couple of singles and two runs scored. Now they're on their feet here at PNC Park. Fam is the final hope for the Cardinals. Boy, he just missed that, didn't he? Fam is two for three. Peter Borges has moved to the on deck circle if Tommy fan could somehow reach. First outing reaching 20 pitches since June 12. Span of 12 appearances for the hard throwing Melanson. Fans had a nice night. One and two. What do you think about the pitch count getting up there for the closer? If that has an effect, potentially the rest of the way in this series. Well, there's a magic number for relievers. I don't think he's there yet for whether or not he could pitch tomorrow. But he's Clint Hurdle's guy right now, to be sure. One and two to count on fam. And with this win, the Pirates are four and a half games back of St. Louis. Five to the final tonight. With too much Garrett Cole for the Cardinals. He goes to 13 and three. Seven solid innings from Cole. Gives up a couple of runs. And the big hit in the game was delivered by Neil Walker. He had a two run shot in the fourth inning and the Pirates get back on their winning ways after losing their win streak yesterday at five. They've started another one. Back to you Jim.